the public Wi-Fi network that you use, like in the coffee shop or in a hotel, are not as secure as you think it would be, even if they are password protected. Hi there, this is Vinav once again and this video I'm going to show you how easy it is for a hacker to hack public Wi-Fi network using packet sniffing applications like Wireshark and what steps you can do to protect it. But before we get down to the brass tacks of packet sniffing, it is important to understand how the data is transmitted between your computer and the router. So when you send an email or watch a video on YouTube, every data that you are sending is broken down into smaller chunks called packets. These packets contain information like the website you are requesting, your username and password etc. And believe it or not, these packets are not encrypted. Anybody with right software and knowledge can grab this packet and see what's inside it. They can do this with the help of a right software called Packet Sniffer. So if you are on Android, you can use Csploit or ZNT. I have done a special video on that, so check that out. And if you are on a computer, then you can use Wireshark, which we are going to see in this video. So here is how it works. Go ahead and install Wireshark. It is basically a packet analyzer used in big industries to troubleshoot network problems. And it is available for Windows, Mac and Linux. Now once installed, this software may look a little bit complicated, but it's not. Now one thing that many people miss out is, to capture packets using Wireshark, you need an external Wi-Fi adapter, which is capable of monitor mode, like this one from TP-Link. In most computers, especially the Windows one, the Wi-Fi card do not support monitor mode, which means it only care about the packet transfer between this computer and the router itself. It cannot listen to what other computers are transmitting, which is of course a good thing, otherwise people would have misused this feature. But what hacker can do is, they can buy another Wi-Fi adapter, like this one from TP-Link. Or even most of the MacBook has this feature built in. You don't even have to buy a Wi-Fi adapter. Now using this, you can capture Wi-Fi packets, thereby listening to what all the other computers are speaking on the network. So insert this Wi-Fi adapter to the USB port of the computer and then fire up Wireshark. To start with, go to option and then it will show you a bunch of network cards, where you need to choose one of them. Now how are you going to know which Wi-Fi adapter should you use? Well look for the one that has IP address linked to it. And make sure to turn on promiscuous mode or the monitor mode near it. Otherwise it will only capture the data packets between this computer and the router. Now if you don't see this monitor mode option, then you need to get a Wi-Fi adapter that supports it. And that's it, start capturing the data. Remember, it doesn't capture data from a specific computer. Instead, it will capture everything that's going on the network. For instance, it will show you a bunch of IP addresses and strings of protocol which won't make much sense to you. And mostly it's pretty useless. Unless you are a network admin, it's hard to understand these numbers. But let me try to give you a basic idea. So the key of using Wireshark is to use this display filter feature. It helps you to separate the cream from the milk. For example, if I want to see what I am browsing on my mobile, then all I have to do is just filter in the IP address of this mobile phone. Now for all those who are wondering, how would the hacker get the IP address of other device on the network? Well, that's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is use the application like Fing or you can see it from the router control panel. It's pretty basic. Now notice what happens, if the mobile is not connected to the Wi-Fi network or if it's not turned on, then Wireshark won't capture anything because there is nothing floating around in the IP address range. But the moment I unlock this phone, you will see that it immediately captures some data packets. Again, a lot of this data packet won't make much sense to you since all these applications are running in the background and talking to the internet constantly. But if I go to a specific website, then Wireshark will be able to capture that. The source IP address is the IP address of the Android and the destination IP address which is the key here is the IP address of the website which you can always do a reverse lookup for the IP address and find out which website it is or and this is where it gets interesting Wireshark can also do the reverse DNS lookup for you which will give you the name of the website right in front of you like techwiser.com for this instance. So in a nutshell, with this trick, you will be able to see what website people are browsing on your network, aka whether the children are going to a place where they should not be going. And even this is just a tip of the iceberg, why Shark is a lot powerful than this. For instance, if you log in into an unencrypted website, then Wireshark can sniff username and password with the simple HTTP POST request. Similarly, if you want to find out if someone is using torrent on your network, then you can set the filter to BitTorrent protocol. 
obviously i won't go in depth there but you guys can find all the information from google overall the point of this video is to show you guys how insecure a public wi-fi network could be anybody with a small wi-fi adapter can see what exactly are you browsing and there's nothing you can do to stop them yes the scary part is you won't even know if somebody is using wireshark on your network and even if you suspect you won't be able to do anything about it However, there are certain precautions that you can take. Number one, prefer HTTPS. So while browsing the websites, prefer the one that uses HTTPS by default. Now, HTTPS is not going to stop the intruder from seeing what website you are browsing. However, they won't be able to see what websites you are browsing inside a particular website. For instance, now that Amazon India uses HTTPS, thankfully, if you go to Amazon.in and buy something, the hacker can see that you are on Amazon website but they won't be able to see what page you are in. Since the website is using HTTPS, all that information is encrypted. In fact, if you Google anything these days, the first 80 results are going to be HTTPS websites. Google has admitted that they use HTTPS as a ranking factor. However, since more than 50% of the web traffic is coming from mobile app, there's no definite way to tell if the mobile application is using HTTPS or not. Some application like WhatsApp has end-to-end -end encryption, which means all the messages are encrypted, while Google messaging apps don't have encryption. So anybody with Wireshark can clearly see and read your message content. The second best thing that you can do is not allow anyone whom you don't trust to use your home network and similarly don't use the public wi-fi network for confidential data. I mean you can use public wi-fi network for normal browsing however if you have to do confidential browsing and if it is necessary then make sure you use VPN while you are on public wi-fi network. So say if you want to log in to your bank account from an unsecure network then first connect to the VPN and then open the website. This way, even if the hacker is tracking your data packets, they will only be able to see that you're connecting to a VPN and nothing after that. So yeah, that's about it. By the end of the day, your security is in your own hand. And since everything is becoming digital these days, most of the theft and robberies in the future is going to be done online. So make sure you know how to keep yourself secure. That being said, I have announced the winner of previous giveaway in the description of this video. So make sure to check that out. And if you are the lucky winner, don't forget to send me an email with your shipping address and mobile number. So yeah, that's all for now. It's Minal signing off. And yes, I understand the video schedule is messed up these days. And I promise to make it up for you. So it's Minal signing off. I will see you in the next one. And like always, thank you for watching.